Hi there, welcome to my channel. In this episode, we will be looking at exceptions in Python. So why do we really need to use exceptions? I think it's a discussion for the other video that I've got the link up the top right. So feel free to click on the link for a deeper understanding of exceptions in Python. But for today, I will quickly run you through why we use exceptions in Python. Just in short, if a user is going to be importing some data into a web form or into any application, and if they make a mistake, you do not want the program to stop. You do not want the program to crash. You want to be able to communicate to that user and say, hey, you cannot do this. That user can be yourself or anybody who is going to be the consumer of your application. So let's look at this hacker rank problem for the same issue. We're looking at this problem called exceptions. I'm just going to click on that. Like always, I've got a Jupyter notebook on the far right side of my screen. I've got the HackerRank dashboard on the left with a task on the far left and the platform for me to write the code right in the middle. What is the task? I'm just going to straight jump into the task. You are given two values of A and B. So we will ask the user to provide A and B. Perform integer division and print A divided by B. So when we talk about integer division in Python, I will show you what exactly we mean by integer division. But let me show you the example. So we will ask the user, how many different pairs of A and B do you want to provide? For example, in this example, the user wants to give us three sets of A and B. The first set is number one and number zero, which we know one divided by zero is not really mathematically defined. We want to be able to provide an error code to the user and say integer division or modulo by zero, which is a type of an error in Python. Then the user enters number two and the dollar sign. Mm, two divided by dollar sign doesn't really work. We want to be able to say this is an invalid literal for int with base 10, which is the dollar sign. Dollar sign doesn't have any base 10. But for the last one, for the last set, which is number three and number one, three divided by one should equal three. So there are two types of errors that we will be handling in this very task. One is zero division error. So any proper number divided by zero, like one divided by zero, 10 divided by zero. So that's one type of error. And the second one is the value error, which is probably, as an example, two divided by dollar sign. So before we get into the guts of this problem, let me show you how we will receive the user input. We will ask the user how many pairs of items we will be receiving. So we will call it probably items. It has to be an integer of the input that the user gives us. So for example, the user wants to give us three items. If I show you the number of items, you will see that the user will give us three items. Down the road, I will make a for loop that will go through the items one by one, like one and zero, two and dollar sign, three and one, and perform the integer division. But for now, let's see if the user gives us one and zero, what that really means. Okay, let's start very simple. Let's start with an integer division between one and two. You can see that the integer division between one and two is zero. Essentially, integer division is asking the computer how many value twos exist in value one. Well, value one is very small to hold a value two inside it, so I'm going to get zero anyways. Integer division between three and two, by the way, is one because in the value three, there is one time value two held, which kind of makes sense hopefully now. But if I go on and say value two integer division dollar sign, computer will say, hey, that doesn't really work. It's not something that I understand. So I want to be able to not allow the computer to stop right there, allow it to run and say, hey, user, you are entering something that doesn't really make sense to me. Go ahead and do it again. So I want to be able to do that. And this is called in Python exception. So let me clean my screen. Let's first understand how many different items will be listed. Items equals the integer of input of the user. So if you haven't seen my video on the input function, feel free to click on the link up the top right. But the user will tell me how many different pairs of items will be entered. That will be stored in items. If I print that one out for you, you will see that, for example, the user will say three items will be entered. Once I know how, how many items there are, I need to receive A and B which will come in the form of, again, the input function. All I need to do is to split them using this space in between. And then 
I will convert them to an integer down the track. But for now, I will say I will receive a number of one and number zero. If I show you a, you will see that a is number of one. And if I show you b, you will see that b is number zero. But is it actually a number? I don't think so. It looks like a string down here. So I will need to convert them into an integer down the track. So if I want to perform the integer division between a and b, you will see that I will run into a problem because a and b are not numbers. If I go ahead and convert them to an integer, I might be able to run it. But this time I have a different type of error. It's a zero division error. And this is where actually I wanted to get. I want to be able to capture that error and do not let the application to stop. So let me clean the screen a bit. So I've got the A, a and B from the user. Now I'm facing some problem. What I will do, I will define a new syntax. So we will use the try and accept. If you haven't seen the try and accept, check out the link in the description below. But for now, remember, do whatever you need to do in the try section and look after the errors in the accept section. So let me just add a comment, do what needs be done. So that's it, a handle the errors. This is what we need to do. When I say do what needs be done, so this is exactly do what needs be done. I need to perform an integer division and maybe store it in the result. And I can also print the result. I will also copy the input up here. So I will receive the input from the user, perform the division and print it out. So that's the thing. But now for handling the errors, there are two types of errors that I talked about from the task we need to look after. First, let's call an except for the zero division error and give it an alias name. And also I need one for value error, call it V. And I just need to print a message. What exactly does the task want me to do? I want, I need to print error code. So let's call it error code space and paste E here. And for this one, let's print error code colon. Do I need a space? I don't really need a space and print V here. So let me just clean the screen a bit get rid of this comment, get rid of this comment. So once I run that, I should be able to handle the zero division error because I know that one divided by zero will perform, will cause a zero division error. There you go. It says error code integer division or modulo by zero, which is exactly the copy of this one. And if I run that again and enter two and dollar sign, I should get error code invalid literal for int with base 10, which is exactly this error on the left side. If I run that again and go three and one, I will get three, which is down the bottom here. So I have to construct in place. All I need to do is make a for loop that asks the user, how many different pairs do you want to enter? And for each pair performs the task. So if I go ahead and put all of this under a for loop. So let me just put an enter for i in range of items, because I know that the user will enter a number of items and indent all of them forward, bring this one down. I just want to put them all into one block, put it down here. I don't need to print it. Let's run this. And I'm going to copy exactly what the task is asking me. I will ask, I will say three different pairs, one and zero. It says, integer division or modulo by zero. Next one is two and dollar sign, invalid literal and three and one. The answer is three. So I believe I have covered all the bits and pieces. All I need to do right now is copy all of that code and paste it right in here. Let me run the code. Hopefully it runs successfully, then we can submit it and run multiple test cases. It says, congratulations. So the sample code is okay. If I submit it, more test cases will be tested and everything is great. So look at that. I should get a congratulations. I earned another 10 points. So if you like this challenge, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. That means a lot.